Dude, are you kidding me right now? What's up, my Jeep brothers and sisters? We're going to do a DIY four-way tire inflation system, but this is the Harbor Freight Challenge. We're going to try to buy all the parts we can from Harbor Freight and see what the total is and see if they have the right parts and see if it works and see if these were good choices and uh, parts for this kind of project or not. Okay, so stick with me. This will be a lot of fun. All right, so I spent about an hour today. Of course, I made a list of all the parts I needed. I made a diagram of what I wanted it to look like. I made a list of all the parts of all the individual pieces I needed. I looked them up online. Um, of course, their website says, oh, yeah, they have all these in stock. So I go down there, and the, the problem was Harbor Freight didn't have everything I needed in stock. But I bought everything I could there, which is almost everything. So let's go over that. Now, you'll notice these packages are blue. They're not their usual yellow and white and black or whatever the central pneumatic brand is. And that's because, uh, for the most part, they didn't have the central pneumatic, central pneumatic brand parts that they needed in stock, even though their website said they did. So I ended up buying this Merlin brand. Now, it's usually a little bit more expensive than the central pneumatic brand, and that's okay. So probably end up spending a little more than you might have to when you go to your Harbor Freight to get this done. Um, <clears throat> so let's just look at these parts real quick. These uh, Merlin parts, let's just start with this manifold first. This manifold, I think, was 13-something, and this is all I really need. These three ports on this end and in a port here, I don't need these connectors right here. I won't be using these, although I can probably use one for my compressor um, for a quick connect on the end. So I'm going to use this manifold. For the bottom of this manifold, I'm going to take this quick connect off. I'm going to put that on this female fitting, I'm in this female fitting right here. That's a male piece. We're going to put that in the female fitting right here. And then this male end, we're going to screw to the bottom of the manifold. Okay, that'll give us our lever so we can shut off um, our air or open our air, whatever we want to do. So a little ball valve. And it looks like the orifice is pretty good. You know, be sure to check these orifices. If you're looking at these parts in the sore, make sure they're not... Don't look too small. Now, that's what I ran into with these air chucks right here. So this is the only uh, air chuck that Harbor Freight sells that I could find on their website or in their store um, that clips on. So my Harbor Freight did have about four of these, obviously. My Harbor Freight did have the Central Pneumatic brand of these in stock. Had four of them. Had plenty. But I picked them up and I was kind of looking at them. What's the differences? You know, the color differences. But otherwise, structurally, they look like they're the same thing. Um, but I did happen to look at the bottom, and in the bottom here is the orifice was much bigger in the Merlin. So let's look at a quick video that I shot in the store uh, of these two uh, tire chucks. So the Central Pneumatic is $399, the Merlin is $599, it's a couple dollars more, but the difference is in the aperture size there. Look at the bottom of the chuck. The Merlin aperture is much, much bigger than the Central Pneumatic. So this will be $8 more total by the time you buy four of these. It'll be $8 more, but I think that's going to give better airflow. Okay, now these do say, you know, that the shutoff valve stops airflow when not on valve stem. Okay, so hopefully that'll work for us. Now, as far as the other connectors go, the problem, the biggest problem I ran into at Harbor Freight was they do not sell these barbed, um, 3 8 barbed fittings with the quarter inch MPT on the other side. Uh, individually. So you have to buy these kits. And so this Merlin kit, I don't remember what it was, 279 or something. And it actually comes with that. It comes with a two-way uh, adapter uh, union or coupler. What do they call it here? Double barb for splicing hoses. So that's just for a hose splice. It does come with three hose clamps. And so I thought, well, for that price, um, I'm getting three hose clamps. It's my only option at Harbor Freight, so I'll buy some of these. So I bought four of these. One, two, three, four. And the part I could not get at Harbor Freight was these barbed tees. Okay, this is a 3 8 barbed tee. I ended up getting these at Ace Hardware. Now, these were $7.99. These are $7.99 at Ace Hardware. And I only need a couple of them. So that's, you know, $16. That's 8 times 2 is $16 just for these. Now, I could get plastic and get a little cheaper, right? Uh, but a lot of our foiling we do is in the mountains. And a lot of times it's in the winter and we're snow busting and it's below freezing. And so I don't want anything cracking and getting cold and brittle on me and busting and then being a problem when I'm trying to air up at the end of a long day. So brass, yes. Um, 
And now you can do this a Harbor Freight without buying these fittings. Harbor Freight does, because Harbor Freight doesn't sell these, Harbor Freight does sell a three-way T. I'll show up a picture of that right here so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so, and I could have bought those and I could have bought, you know, that would take three, that would take six more of these kits right here. And they only had seven of these in stock. Okay, so I already need four plus another six would be 10 and they only had seven in stock of these. So I'm trying to do this all with Harbor Freight stuff. That was my limitation of what they had in stock. So that kind of sucked and they didn't know when they were gonna get them back in. So I went ahead and went to Ace Hardware and bought these. Now, if you do buy, if you do end up going with the Harbor Freight um, quarter inch MPT T, okay, that T, then you have to buy four more of these because you need those. And they don't sell those individually. Then you have a bunch of hose clamps. Uh, of course, uh, you're going to use uh, some of the hose clamps for each kit. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention was, now this is the hose I bought. This is the, this is $24. Don't forget that your hose is going to come with these quarter inch MPT fittings right here. Okay, so you're going to be able to use those somewhere. So that's two less fittings that you have to buy. So you don't need to buy, um, you know, you can buy two less than, just make sure you calculate when you're doing the calculations that you're including those in your um, S. And speaking of cold temperatures, here's the hose I bought. This was the package that came in. I've already taken it out, but it's a rubber hose. It's all rubber, and that's what I wanted. I don't want a hybrid hose. I don't want a PVC hose. Definitely don't want a PVC hose. Uh, just because they're so snarly and so kink so easily and so uh, their memory is so good. Um, so I want a rubber hose. This is like $24, I think, $24.99. But it says it's good down to minus 20, which is great for those cold days we're snow busting. We're usually not jeeping below zero, you know, but uh, usually it's 10, 20 degrees or so, sometimes 30. But it's usually below freezing all day in the mountains when we're driving and snow busting. So that's what we want. And so if even if it doesn't go down to minus 20, if it still stays flexible, more flexible than the other kinds of hoses, than the other types of um, hoses, then I'm better off. So, and here's why you want this rubber hose right here. See how flat it lays out? No coils, no nothing. I just got this out and laid it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at my measurement. Now this video is not going to be watching me screw things together and put things together, okay? Um, this is not hard stuff to do. You cut the hose, you put the fitting in, you tighten the clamp on, you move on to the next one. So um, you're going to be checking for leaks at the end, but uh, hopefully we can get this together pretty quick. I'm not going to put you through all that misery, um, but I'll talk about key points as I go. Looks like I might be able to make this work. Okay, and this is what this looks like. So I typically put these on with my right hand. You don't want that getting in the way of your lever. So put it up to the side. I don't really want it under my thumb or over on this side where my hand is. I'm gonna to try to get it over here just to this kind of nine o'clock side, I guess. Okay, problem number one is I'm going to have to get an adapter because this, these are quarter inch MPT, but this on the bottom of the manifold is not, it's huge. So this is quarter inch MPT, so this is something bigger, and I'm going to have to get an adapter to get this ball valve to fit on. Okay, here's my solution to this 3 8 uh, MPT right here. So... That's three eighths, that's quarter. You can see there's a big difference there, right? So I had a couple options when I was looking at Harbor Freight today. I could either buy this adapter that's three eighths down to quarter, male, male, and I'll use that one. 
I don't need the other pieces, just that one, and they didn't sell that individually. Okay, so my other option was to buy a different valve like this, although the only valves they had on stock at Harbor Freight were female, female, okay? So I would have had to buy an adapter also, a straight adapter, which I can get, of uh, 3 8 male to 3 8 male, and then I could have screwed that on there. So that would be one adapter, one valve, and then I would be able to use this on the other end. So that turned out to be a little more expensive than just buying this adapter, so we're going to use this adapter in this case. If you're wondering what wrench fits this, this is a 1 and 1 16th. I'm sure there's a metric wrench that fits this. I don't have one this size, though. So, or of course a good crescent wrench would fit it. The problem I was running to with a crescent wrench is my crescent wrench is so wide right here, I couldn't get on these, um, <clears throat> I couldn't get a wrench on that nut. Okay, so we have the manifold. We have the 3 8 NPT to quarter NPT reducer right there. We have the quarter uh, female to quarter male valve here, and it works both ways. That's kind of cool. And so I just had to bend this up just a little bit so it would clear this manifold. No big deal. And then we'll screw one of these on. Okay, and that's what the final product looks like. There's the gauge. Okay, let's get it hooked up and try it out. Okay guys, I gotta shoot this quick. We're running out of daylight. The sun's going down at like 4.30 now. So we got all the tires hooked up though. And so they should all equalize, even though they're a pound or two off each. Let's just look at this gauge here and see what it says. And it's saying, let's turn it where we can read it. About 32 PSI, okay? Let's get our other gauges that we trust out, put them on one of the tires, and see if that's see if we get the same thing. Okay. So that's working. It cuts off, right? It doesn't allow air to flow through. That's good. Got it zeroed there. Oh, wow. That's saying 32 PSI exactly. Well, that's good. That means that gauge is pretty accurate. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see what the TPMS says inside. So you can see 32, 34, 36, and 36. That's a big difference um, in tire pressure. So they should have all equilibrated. So we'll give it just a minute here and see if they um, register. Okay, so hopefully that's visible. Um, all the tires are at 32 according to the TPMS. The left rear is at 34, and it could just be a calibration issue. It's been about 10 minutes, so it should have updated by now. And um, let's see how long it takes to run these down, to air them down to, let's say, 12 PSI. Okay, it's reading 32 PSI. And we're going to set the stopwatch here. And here we go. Okay, so there's 12 PSI at about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Let's just see here if it's really 12 and a half or thereabout. Okay. What even says 12 and a half right there? So even at that low pressure, that little cheap Harbor Freight Pittsburgh gauge is accurate. That's pretty cool. Okay, got the four way tire inflator hooked up deflator whatever we're going to call it and there's the manifold and the gauge we got one hose coming off over here going to that tire hooked up to that tire hooked up to the back tire there 
And you can see they're pretty squatty. Definitely aired down. Got this one hooked up here and this one hooked up back here. So they're all equalized. Okay, so if you're wondering why I'm starting the Jeep, um, it's because of this number right here, 90 amps. That's a lot of amps. That'll drain your battery pretty quick. So, um, and it seems to run better at a higher RPM with the alternator charging the battery. So you can definitely tell a difference in the RPM. But this video is not about this, of course. If you wanna watch videos on this, I've got another video on this. Um, I'm also gonna be putting another one out on uh, modifications for it, such as this thing. There's a couple other things I'm doing to it just to make it a little more reliable and easier to use, I think. So right now we have 12 PSI in all four tires. And this video is not gonna be about timing it because there's another video coming up about that. But it is gonna be about just making sure the system works. So we'll plug it in there. We'll open the valve and here we go. There's 32 pounds. You know, I've gone all around the whole system and I've listened for leaks. I can't find any leaks. Let's just turn this off here. Let's just check the pressure and see what it's like. And that's saying right about 32 as well. Okay. All right, the Harbor Freight Challenge, was it a success? We made a DIY four tire inflation system and it works, you know, uh, at least it works in the driveway. This is driveway test, this is not real world test, of course. And it might work, might be reliable. It might last a long time, it might not. You know, we're gonna have to try it out in the real world where it's sometimes raining, sometimes snowing, getting knocked around in the Jeep, getting drug around on the ground. Is it gonna last? I don't know, maybe. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep some repair products with me. And here's some of the things I'm going to keep with me. An extra air chuck, um, an extra quick connector, the female end, the extra male end there with a female um, quarter inch adapter. There's one with the male quarter inch adapter. This is a hose barb actually. I'm going to keep an extra one of those. A couple of splices, a couple of hose clamps just in case I got to make a repair. Okay, and that should take care of me. Okay, and finally, if you're interested in this maxi track compressor, um, 120 bucks from Napa, and it moves 300 liters per minute, which is crazy amount of air. And so I've already made a video on how well it performs on the 37 inch tires on this. And you can check my channel and just search under my channel, just search maxi track and it'll show up. Um, also, I'll be making a video, hopefully I'll have it out in the next week or so of some modifications I'm making to it. So uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope this helps you out. And hey, thanks for watching.